All right, good evening. Uh, we're gonna call to order the uh, November 12th, 2020 uh, Community Preservation Committee meeting for the town of North Andover. I'll begin by reading the, uh, the governor, the, the, the pre-script we have to for, the, for each meeting. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the North Andover Community Preservation Committee will be conducted by remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by the members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandoverma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch the meeting may do so on their television by tuning to Comcast Channel 8, Verizon Channel 26, or online at www.northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we'll post on the Town of North Andover website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay. Um, I guess we'll uh, we'll get right into it. Uh, we do have a, uh, a, I think, a fairly robust agenda tonight, um, so I want to be mindful of everyone's time and, and see if we can plow through this. Uh, first on the agenda is a wrap up of the playground signs uh, we discussed from I think last meeting or two meetings ago. Uh, Laurie Burslaff has uh, been nice enough to join us for a few minutes to answer any questions that popped up. Um, we did, I think we were good on the design at the last meeting and we discussed um, kicking around the, the, the language uh, of what, how it should actually read. Um, Laurie, you had a conversation with Melissa, correct, um, regarding the final wording, which I think ended up being a little bit different than what we, uh, what we had all talked about. Um, I think I'm okay with it, uh, but I want to kind of just read it off to the committee so that everyone is uh, on board. Um, I believe we, what we settled on was this playground is funded in part by the citizens of North Andover using community preservation funds. That makes sense. That makes sense to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, just, I think when, so when we do different pro, like different um, projects, we'll obviously change the word playgrounds. But I think in this particular one, the playgrounds um, were fully funded. So well, we fully, can just say this playground yeah. is funded by instead of partially funded in part. Um, and then when we do other projects, the signs for those. Um, you can modify them based on the project, but I'm, I think I have to count them up, but I think we're ordering 12 of these, so however many playgrounds we've done. Yeah, I think there were 12 on the invoice um, that, that I saw. So that makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah, I think, you know, from, from last meeting, everyone was on board with the design. Um, Laurie and I spoke a little bit about the QR code um, without having uh, Chris McClure around. Um, I think we're going to kind of, Laurie, I think you mentioned maybe we can leave a space for it and kind of deal with it after the fact. Yeah, I'll talk to um, our consult, our IT consultant, and ask them if um, we can put maybe screw on a um, like square plaque or something or a sticker, somehow put it on afterwards. Um, because you're going to have to work with IT. Like, what do you want? What do you want to come up when? they scan that code bill you had some thoughts on that right regarding uh kind of how it ties into the overall database project yeah i mean we we have the map and we have like individual records and everything i it's just not you know we're kind of at the same spot where i didn't want to brother chris when he was dealing with covid and moving the whole operation online and then um and now, you know, he's departed. So I, I guess it'd be tough. I, I think we could go to the, I think it'd be better to finish the, you know, the individual records each, you know, sort of project before we put the QR codes on, you know, have it a hundred percent. 
or we could the other thing we could do just as easily is just come to the landing page and could have the list of projects you know that that would be easier because every qr code would be the same they'd all go to the landing page for the committee so if you're going to do different ones i would definitely suggest something after the sign like have the signs done because that's just going to be a template every single yeah. every single sign um if you're going to do all the same then it's up to you whether you want to delay the printing of the signs mm -hmm. and i can work with the consultant to see um how we can get the one qr code on there mm -hmm. they may suggest that you do it separately anyway I'm not sure I have to find out from the sign company how, you know, if that's something that they can do anyway. So it's up to you guys. Um, we could de delay the ordering of the signs or order the signs and then add it later. I, yeah. I, I do kind of like the idea of having just go into our main landing page because, you know, you may be clicking about one playground and then realize there's the whole world of other CPCs. Yeah, well, that's true. You know? So I, 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 I would say, um, you know, I think I'm inclined to say, let's, let's get these signs up sooner rather than later. So yeah. if, it, if the IT consultant says, you know, we can leave a spot for it and this is what fits, uh, I'd, I'd like you guys to be able to kind of get on with it and not be waiting for us anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What I'll do is um, I'll talk to um, Don from Don Sign Tech. They're the ones that we got the quote from. Tell her about the QR code, see if she needs to change the design at all um, to fit that in, which I don't think she'll have to. Um, and then I can just forward you out the final template. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, I'm hoping that was quick. Oh, you, uh, we had some questions, Laura, that, that popped up regarding, you know, kind of the installation of the signs and, and kind of what they were going to look like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attempt for at least for everyone who's on here to kind of share my screen and um, show you at least the pictures that um, Laurie shared with me of kind of how they would be, how they would be affixed to the various uh, chain link fence, kind of give you an idea. These are going to be metal signs, correct, Laurie? Yes. Okay. And this was, was suggested by the director of DPW um, rather okay. than putting them on legs. Um, it's just, I think, a little more secure. Okay. Um, and and the locations of the signs, all that stuff. It's obviously be a case by case basis on each each playground, right? Yeah. So they all should have a fence. Anyway, so we'll be able to attach them to the fence. Okay. Okay. We'll try to put them where they're most visible, like at the gate. Um, you know, when you're walking in or something to that effect. Right. Uh, anyone have any other questions for Lori regarding signs? No. Okay. All right. Lori, thank you for taking the time. We'll uh, let you get on with your night. All right. Thank you. Have All a good right, night. Great. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye. 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 Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Larry. Uh, okay. Uh, where's my little handy agenda here? Uh, next, uh, wanted to give everybody a quick update on the Rolling Ridge um, easement and, and all that, where, where we're at. Um, uh, John and I, and I think Terry were copied on some emails from Gene. Um, where it looks like we have um, an agreed to, at least on, on the town's end, a uh, relocation of the trail uh, and an addition, an expansion of the easement of about 7,000 square feet or so. John, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm, if I'm misremembering that. Um, there are two paths I believe we could take um, as recommended by, by Suzanne, um, Suzanne Egan. One would be to get a new trail easement the other would be to simply uh, expand the conservation area uh, by that 7,000 square feet or so. Um, John, you and I, I don't think I've had a talk, chance to talk about it at all, but uh, I think that the feeling is that it's probably cleaner to simply just expand the CR, correct? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, that would obviously be easier if you had no concerns about Rolling Ridge and them staying true to it. That would be far and away the cleaner way to do it. Uh, if you were concerned that they might change their mind sometime down the road, you would, you would want to get the, the, the assurance. Uh, but, you know, I think the report is good enough. We probably could take a shot on that. But Okay. And and if I recall the you know the original uh, and I'm gonna I'm actually gonna pop up and kind of share my screen here so folks can see what what we're talking about um, the original uh, appropriation didn't specify a specific land size or anything like that so I, I think this is well within the bounds of the original appropriation that was the feeling. So for those of you on the screen right now, you can see uh, I, we've kind of extended the, uh, the hashed area by about 7,760 square feet. So um, I think the plan is to present this to uh, Reverend Jay and say this is the, the compromise solution and, and move on from there and just amend the document accordingly. It does should not require any additional expenditure of, of funds. Any questions on this, Terry? Have you had a chance to see this plan? Yes. Yeah. I thought it looked great, and I think it's a good way to go. With what you're talking about. The only thing, I just want to make sure we don't forget the signage. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I spoke with both Gene and Amy about that, and said, okay, what do we what do we need to do uh, to get some signage out there on on Great Pond Road? Um, we have a little more research to do, I think, to figure out what the uh, what the rights are and, and what we what we need to do, but yeah, signage is uh, is the, the the last open item we'll have once we get this uh, revised plan uh, all settled. So, great. Okay, all right. So, if there's no other uh, other questions on that, um, again, this doesn't require any kind of vote, so we can just we can move on from to our next uh, our next topic. Uh, which is so if everyone has the or seen the Google um, file, we have a um, folder dedicated to Usler. Um, I put in there a, a site walk memo, which I'll uh, I'll review based on what our discussion was uh, when we were on site and and give everybody kind of a, a quick overview of, of what was discussed. So. We met on site. Uh, I, had, I had a call first with Suzanne Egan on uh, on the 14th, and we reviewed. Um, sorry, let me just get to this here for a second. Uh, we reviewed kind of the, the, the all the documents uh, pertaining to the Usler acquisition, make sure we understood what the town's uh, rights were, what the allocation was, and, and what all our authority was. Um, so it, it does appear that based on all the deeds and everything was signed, we have we have the authority to move forward with the parking lot, uh, subject to uh, you know local permitting, uh, going through site plan review and everything else. Uh, we don't need any other um, uh, approval or uh, any other other, other than a butter's notifications that would normally be needed through the planning process to go ahead and move forward with this parking lot. Uh, there's about $24,000 still available uh, in the original allocation, uh, which can go towards the construction of the parking lot. Um, and the conservation restriction in the deed allows for uh, pass and repass access technically over the Usler's existing driveway uh, right now. That was how it was spelled out. Um, so there are uh, a couple of parcels, which I will share with, uh, with everyone here. I'll show you an example of the lot, the, 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 uh, the plan that John Borghese came up with. Uh, actually shows a, a, a 20 car parking area with direct access off of Osgood Street. Um, the idea being that we would try and permit you know, the first 10 spaces with the option to expand down the road if need be. So um, there's an example of the plan there in the uh, in the file right now. Uh, which the idea was to kind of tuck it as far away from the Usler driveway as possible, uh, where there's already a lot of natural screening with the other abutters. 
um, and it seems to be the, the highest and driest area. Uh, Amy Maxner was out there with us. She it took some soil samples. She's confident that it's non-jurisdictional from a conservation perspective. Um, so we should be able to move straight to, uh, to site plan approval, um, assuming we're good to, to go ahead with this. Um, while we were on our walk, um, I'll share this other plan here. Uh, Glenn from uh, Phonat joined us. Uh, and he had a nice little tracking system on his phone. They tracked everywhere that we walked. So you'll see he drew a new map, a proposed trail map, uh, in, shown here in purple, uh, where you'd come up from Osgood Street. Uh, you can walk through a nice wooded area, cross a little bit of a brook, and then it connects to the existing trail at Half Mile Hill uh, and runs back up to the existing um, Osgood Hill trail network, along with a couple of other cut-throughs that are nice loops through the meadow and through the, uh, through the wood area there. Um, it, it made for a really nice, uh, nice trail um, setup, uh, and I don't think Phonat was even necessarily aware that this was available to them. So uh, Glenn's going to put that on their agenda and their process to move through um, the conservation permitting that they need to to get the bridges put in place and to to get the trail actually permitted. So, um, so all good on that front. Um, Lastly, while we were on site, um, uh, Mrs. Usler uh, came home, saw us. Jean and I went over and spoke with her a little bit, let her know what we were doing, who we were, uh, and that we were going to be formalizing more of our plans, and we'd be in touch in the future uh, to to make them aware uh, of what's uh, what's happening. I've not heard anything from uh, the family since, uh, or from any any councils. My understanding is that uh, Attorney Smolak does not represent the family anymore, um, but uh that's where we stand right now so uh next steps is to uh, uh, kind of work through this this plan talk with jean she wants to have some conversations with the folks at dpw regarding uh, maintenance and ongoing maintenance um but we should be in the position to uh, she actually had to research a little bit more to the curb cut issue on osgood street to make sure she understood what permitting needed to happen there uh, but we should be in a position to hopefully move uh move this one forward so so I'll stop monologuing. Any questions? Okay. No, I think that's I think that's great. The um, the lot looks like it's it's in a good spot, um, and you'd have enough you'd be able to see it, you know, from the from the road. But it would definitely be distinct views with the driveway. Um, yeah, I think it's it's important to know to keep it away from respect their their driveway. Uh, even though we have the access over it, they still own it. It is still their front driveway. So I think the further away from it we can keep it, the better. And and the walk itself is actually relatively screened um, from all the houses uh, on both sides as you as you make the walk up the hill. So I think it looks great. Great. Okay. Uh, Terry, anything to, to add from our from our walk up there? Well, it, just my thought when I was when I was there, I was thinking we were gonna maybe start with five and and go. You know, I I like the option to go to twenty. That's fine. But um, I, I, you know, I just we we're out at um, Roland Ridge with three. Uh, <clears throat> I just didn't think we needed that many. But you know, I hope we do. I hope I hope the it's one of the best used trails we get. I mean, I think it's mm -hmm. be great. But I, I, just, I don't know. I just hate to have put a parking lot into the, that's, you know, we, you know, we're, if we're going to, you know, be in somebody's front yard, I just want, don't want to go bigger than I have to, you know. So my my suggestion would be to go to five with the option to go as far, as big as you want to go. Uh, but, you know, and, and I hope that we someday there's 20 cars there, but I just don't think it is. Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, I, I, that's just my opinion. But whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I don't know about the 20. My, my concern is we don't do it now. It never gets done. And people don't know it's there, but I think once people realize it's there, it's going to become pretty popular. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I, I look at them parking out in the street right. at, at Wire Hill, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I was hopefully just going to say, look cool. at Wire Hill. It's up and down the street. So why, I mean, the whole... Like I said, the hope is it gets a lot of use. So I, I'd I'd rather do it now than it never get done. Okay. 
Well, let me, uh, you know, let me kind of take some of those next steps with Gene. I mean, you know, again, just let's, let's get it permitted, I think, first, and then right. uh, make sure that we can get it budgeted and that we have the funding uh, to, to construct it. I, you know, I'm going to plead complete ignorance on what a 20 car gravel parking lot costs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, recognize that we do have twenty four thousand dollars left, but you know there will have to be some screening and, and some other work right. that needs to be done. But um, at least uh -huh. get the the big hurdles out of the way, uh, mm -hmm. permit it, and let's build it. And like I said, hopefully we we find that we do have overflow that we need to actually build a, a bigger lot. So, so so Brian, can any of that money be you put towards material for the bridge or any of that or that, I, or is that just for the parking lot um i don't know i will find out my feeling is that the the money that was allocated when i've read it pretty closely was very specific to the acquisition of the land for passive recreation and the parking lot the parking lot was spelled out in the appropriation um, but i don't believe that the trails themselves actually work so the, the money so, that Glenn Group's going to need for the bridges, I don't know. I think that my guess is that would have to be a separate uh, funding request. So is that something we could fund, or is that just a, uh, a maintenance item? Uh, John, can you answer that? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Terry. Again, can you say it again? I mean, ma if it's maintenance, we can't cover it. But if it's construction, we can. Mm -hmm. But FODAC could apply. So, like, there's nothing to stop them from. Sorry. Yeah, right. They can they can do whatever they want. I mean, on their own. Um, I mean, they're the ones that maintain the trails more than anybody else. I think. Okay. Well, I just like to see. I, you know, I don't want them to be out trying to fundraise and hold this up. If if it's right, because I mean, without that, without making it into something nice. Um, you know, we're not going to get anybody to go there, you know, so. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the network of trails can exist right now without the bridges, but they're, they're nowhere near their potential. I think, so let's mm -hmm. say, you, you lose right, the loop right. that you right. have, so. Yeah, because right. even if you, you know, even if you had, so I think what's important for us is to get the parking spots and then have something on the street, which, you know, some sort of signage, like, you know, I, I, I know I talk about the Boxford signs a lot, but the Boxford signs are very small, unobtrusive, but distinctive. So when you see them, you know, anywhere you go in Boxford, you see the white sign hanging up, you know, that's a, a recreation area um, or a trail or something like that. So, I mean, I think if we get something, you know, if we can handle the sign, the entry into the lot and then phone out if they even if they want to do a kiosk or a um you know and improve the trails that could be a good a good synergy between the two of us or the town and the phone app because we're not really doing any of it right but right yeah just as i as i you know, the phone app will include the parking sign, all that stuff on their app and on all of their maps. Um, mm. Once that's once that's in place and available to be used, um, I will uh, I'll, I'll I'll do some some further digging on on that. But um, it looks if you'll note on the plan uh, that was submitted by the town engineer that they won't maintain the lot during winter months. Just an FYI, and it'll be limited mm -hmm. in annual maintenance, replacing gravel, that sort of thing that we can't do. So. Okay, so uh, I think you know, John. Did Jean reach out to you regarding the planning process for this? Did she connect with you at all? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't talked to her about this. Um, okay. You know, I exchanged messages with her on the rails to trails or whatever it was, but not about this. Okay, okay. I think she said she was going to reach out to you just to confirm how the next step should work at the at the planning board level for this. But yeah, okay. All right. Um, any other questions on you, sir? No, okay. good job, Brian. Thanks. I, I, th I think the goal should be yeah, that we're you. hopefully under construction in the spring. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. You're welcome.
Brian, um, thanks for getting that going. No, no worries. Happy to do it. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen now. All right, next up on our agenda, I've lost it. Oh, project review. That's where we're at right now. Okay, uh, first, before I guess we go into project review, just a, a quick aside. Uh, did everyone see the email from Stuart uh, today regarding the, the latest funding and the final numbers? Our match for the year is going to be $589,560, uh, which is a 32.4% reimbursement. So I think that came in a little bit better than I think we we're expecting. And that is the, yeah. it's the largest match we've had in the last five years. Nice. Excellent. Brian, you did magic here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pulled some strings. Uh, um, yeah. All right. So moving on to project review. Um, this is going to take up the, the biggest chunk of our night. So I want to kind of try and whip through some of these if we can uh, and try and clean up and close out old projects. Um, so I connected with, um, with Jillian over the course of the last few weeks to see who we had quarterly reports from, who we didn't. Um, for most of the active projects, we have a good number of quarterly reports that are at least within six months. Uh, there are a number that we don't. So um, kind of want to run through some of these, give quick updates. If, if anyone here in the committee, uh, if it's a, within their respective purviews and they have any idea, any inputs they can offer, uh, we'll kind of run through them and, and go from there. So uh, I'm going to work off the... Um, the CPA uh, project balance spreadsheet, which is dated September 30th, um, which I think is the last one that should be in the Google file that everyone has. So I'm just going to run down that in order uh, and we can hopefully uh, look through most of these. So, uh, so 1304 is the Rolling Ridge conservation um, restriction. That one um, we're going to leave, I would recommend we leave open to pay for signage. Uh, and if there's any remaining design costs, I think that need to be implemented or need to be paid for um, with regard to the expand, expansion of that restriction to the stuff. So um, the question did come up that whether or not we can use the remaining funds, we have balanced about $95,000 for maintenance of um, the, the lot, but I don't believe that we can, correct, Mark? Right. No, you can't. Uh, not, not to name it. It's got to be original construction activity or elements related to the, the purchase. So, right. Okay. Okay. So the signage is fine. Okay. All right. So I think that's one that we'll uh, we'll leave open. Uh, Thirteen twenty one is uh, is Usler. Uh, we just discussed, which we'll leave open for block construction and signage. Uh, 1331 is McAvoy Fields. Uh, there's a balance of about $5,000. I don't believe there's been any activity in years in this one. Anyone have any ideas on this project? We have not received a so report. DPW, not that I have. DPW was supposed to buy the rest of the benches for that for that project the, um, to go around the park. We've asked them a bunch of times about it, but they, they're not, um, they, for one reason or another, they're not doing it. Uh, so I think I'd like to ask them one more time if they'll put the benches out. If not, we'll cancel at the next meeting. So. Okay. Were they going to use the remaining $5,000 for those benches? That's what, that's what they were, that, that's what that money was intended for. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. We'll leave open. All right, uh, project 1333, um, mixed use trails phase one. Project is complete, uh, according to, uh, to Jean. Uh, she did ask about the maintenance, which we just discussed. There's a $54,000 balance. Um, since we can't use any of that, those funds for future maintenance, um, you know, Jean's recommendation is this project be closed. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll Ask, do we want are to? Oh, yeah. are, are we making motions on this? Yeah, I, I think my 
uh, we'll probably just make one motion at the end. I'll make notes of these. Does that oh, make okay. sense? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now that uh, works. I'll make note of it. Okay. No, sorry, I'm Third trying to, and I'm I'm sorry. I could be a little behind. So it was the Mills to Hill? Is this the Mills to Hills Trail or something else? Yeah. This is Mills to Hill. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess, you know, I, I guess where does maintenance and finishing it enhancements kind of differ? You know, did I, I mean, was I catching that, that right the last time that there were some things that could have been done better in the first place that we want to go back and sort of fix? Or is it, you know, pure maintenance? I, I've walked it. I mean, I think there are good sections. The one section behind Harkaway Road is pretty swampy. That's what I've noticed. And I've walked it a bunch with my wife. I, I, I agree with you. And uh, that was my thing is I, I would like to see them go back in and put in wood chips or something in that section and raise it up. Uh, I know we had a really dry summer, so uh, people might think it's not that bad, but it, it's going to be bad on a normal on an right. So to your point, Bill, you know, if, if it wasn't, if it needs to be built a little bit better, that's may not necessarily be maintenance to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. As it kind of looks like they, I mean, to me, it looked like they drove like a brush hog through a bunch of times and, you know, cleared it out, but didn't do anything about the sort of base of the, of the trail, you know, and I don't know what they can do given the, you know, it's it's a little wet. I don't know if it's you know um, de determined to be a wetland or anything. I don't know what you what your options are if it's wood chips or gravel or something. But it seems like you know it's getting a lot of use. I see a ton of people taking it. So I think if we you know if we could while the project's open just kind of go back to everybody and say like what are our options um, to, to make this a little bit to enhance this a little bit before we close it off and okay. return the money to the general fund. Okay. Uh, all right, I will, um, I'll touch base with Gene on that and I'll just, um, and I'll, I'll probably get Suzanne's opinion as well, just to make sure that we're not running a file on, uh, on CPA regulation uh, on that. I think it, it I think there's a fair argument for it for sure, so. Okay, uh, all right. Moving along, 1359 at the uh, middle school field's design. Uh, they spent 525000 of the $600,000 that was allocated. Um, I think I'm inclined to leave anything associated with the middle school fields open for the time being. Oh. All right. Yep. Uh, all right, 1360, uh, Drummond. So uh, project is complete. Um, the uh we've got about well, seven hundred dollars left in the budget uh we're able to close i think the only thing that's remaining is the sign installation which i'm actually not even sure we need to leave open for that because it was those are able to be paid for out of administrative funds i think the the whole sign package is only 840 dollars um so we should be able to close uh close drumming because the project is otherwise complete any objections to that one no uh, same thing for 1361, uh, the Stevens sign, uh, Stevens uh, Estate Trails. That I'm told that project is also complete. Now, this one, though, is not the playground signage, so we may need to leave this one open to pay for our own signage here. We have a balance of about $7,600 available. So we'll put this in the overall sign bucket. All right, uh, 1366. Uh, playground renovations, $200,000. That project is complete. That should be closed. There's no, it's a zero balance. Okay. Uh, 1367, Wire Hill parking lot. I have on our list still is open, but I see it, there's a notation in the closed per CPC memo. So, uh, did we already close this one? I thought we did because that was done a while ago, and they they even had a ribbon cutting. That's what I thought. I'm just I'm not whole, entirely sure of the notation on the uh, 
on the spread. We could you know, no harm in canceling it again. Right, right. Just to be sure. Uh, okay, 1368 Community Fields Project. I think we know what to do there. Um, all right, 1371. Um, this one we do have a quarterly report on. This is the Sear Boardwalk project that we approved last year. Um, they're anticipating completion in 2022, uh, but that is uh, that is in progress. Uh, 1372 Playground Master Plan. Um, this one is which which this is an Alpine. I don't think. Either either way, it's 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 in progress. We'll um we'll be leaving that one open. Thirteen seventy three. So this one is the Glenny Woodlot acquisition. There's a balance of thirty eight dollars. Uh, the acquisition has been made. Uh, the only thing left to do would be to to install signage on the property. Um, thirty eight bucks isn't going to be enough to do that. So um, my thought would be we close this project out. Um, and make note that we need to include Glenny in our in our future sign project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, our, our friends at the uh, the Green Belt will put whatever sign it did we want in the bottom pay for it. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so there should be no reason we can't close the project on our end then. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, 1377 playgrounds that we just approved. Uh, obviously, that is still underway. I think that one's Applin, so we'll leave that one. That one will stay open. All right, moving on to historical. Um, okay, 1249. Um, I don't have a quarterly. This is a restoration of the burial ground. We don't have a quarterly report on file recently. There's a zero balance. Yeah, uh, that, that project is done, Brian. That's done. Yeah. Great. Okay. That was actually the first CPA project in town. Okay. Good. Good. Are, are we are we keeping it on the list for nostalgia's sake? <laughs> no, I'm going to take it off. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, CJ, this is going to be your show here as we run through this. Uh, Thirteen fourteen restoration of historical records. Yeah, that was a town hall thing. I'm not sure about that. I, I'm. I think it's done. Okay. Yeah. The only thing there is that. That got done in multiple iterations, so I I don't know which one it is. It was it like Rev five or six or whatever. But we, you know, we probably, yeah, yeah. I I mean, probably worth talking to the town clerk to find yeah. out where they are if there's any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks like they spend about ninety percent of the money, so I'll check with the town clerk. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, 1316, uh, old burying ground, uh, gravestone refurbishment, uh, there's about 9,500 bucks left. That one, I think we'll have to check on, uh, because they could still be doing some work over there. The people that do it kind of do it in little, little blocks and they're kind of okay. old and they're very slow. So that, okay. that could very well still be, still be active. So we, we, yeah, we'll have to check on that. Okay. I'll, right. I'll find out. Yeah, if we if we could get maybe a quarterly report on that one too, that'd be that'd be great. So, uh, all right, thirteen seventeen looks. This is the restoration of the main gate at Ridgewood. It looks like it's already been closed. Yeah, I thought we closed that a long time ago. That's my recollection. Okay. okay, great. And and I think Brian, my recollection is that the uh, the cemetery people did a very detailed update in a quarterly thing of where every single item stood. And my recollection was they said that one was... Okay. Okay, I thought so. Which one are we talking about, John? This one? The, uh, the gate. At, the gate. At, okay. At okay. Yeah. yeah. A lot of cemeteries in here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's... <laughs> Speaking of that, all right, 1325, the uh, preservation of the second burying grounds. Uh, that is still active. That's still active. Okay. Yeah, I, they they were the, I actually uh popped in there back in August and they were they were working in there, so great. They uh, okay. they're still out there. All right. Uh 1326, this is the uh historical society building. 
Mm-hmm. It was about 500 bucks 500. the uh, balance. Uh, we'll have to. I'll, we'll have to. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll inquire on that one. I'm. I'm pretty sure it's done, but we'll just. Okay. We'll get the. We'll get the Great. okay. Great. Uh, thirteen twenty-seven is the Stevens Estate Roofing. Looks like it's already been closed. So we close at a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, my that that one's fairly old. So I, yeah, I think that was done a long time ago. I thought that was already closed. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah, they just you know they look like they're closed in here, but they still stay in the spreadsheet. So uh, I'll confirm with Jillian uh, all of that. Yeah. So uh, same thing with thirteen twenty nine Ridgewood Cemetery. Looks like it's already been closed. This was the uh, that was only seventy five hundred bucks. So okay, uh, thirteen thirty eight. This one will require a little bit of discussion. Um, so this project is for the relocation of the Bradstreet Memorial to the uh, ABECT uh, or EEC, Uh, the new Bradstreet School. Um, So they submitted a request to us for disbursement of some funds, uh, probably $1,500 or so, I think, or maybe 3,000 bucks for some landscape design from Waterfield Design Group, which they broke out the overall project. Um, I think it's around $70,000 and change of which a portion is being funded by the school department and a for- portion is proposed by CPC. So it was approved in 2016. The work is just kind of underway now. Uh, they put the disbursement request in. Uh, Laurie and I took talked about it and we kind of put it on hold for the time being because we weren't sure if the landscape design that kind of goes all around the moving of the um, the memorial is applicable and allowed in CPA. So we are, are getting Suzanne's opinion on that right now. Um, for, for people who don't recall the project, I had to look it up myself. It was a big chunk, about an 18 foot chunk of concrete and granite that came from the old Grad Street School with the plan of it being relocated at the Early Childhood uh, Education Center. Um, as a memorial to the Bradstreet School and to other schools that have been demolished. Um, but in the invoice that we got, it had the full landscape plan for the whole entrance, um, which is you know, clearly part of the school department budget. So um, it didn't give any kind of breakdown of design fees of what may be applicable from CPC funds or what may not. So we have asked Suzanne to get her opinion on this one. Uh, I wasn't on the committee when this was approved, but was there well, anything? Uh, do, you, do you recollect? Uh, yeah, who? I, I mean, I know Stan was basically behind it, but I don't know if he acted as an individual or as part of a group. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in the way like the Historical Society obviously put in the application for their building, but for this one, I don't know how it was done because it, it begs the question of sort of like how an invoice could be generated without sort of, you know, formal standing, I guess. Well, yeah, it was Stan, Stan's the one advocating for it now. Um, um, he didn't submit the invoice. He's, I think, but I, I haven't had any direct conversation with him about it. Uh, I, I forget who submitted the invoice. Is it Brian Howard? Is that the name? Um, from Historic, maybe? Um, the, the funds have been spent. I, I guess the question becomes about the original appropriation back in 2016 and whether or not you know, how the, the whole thing is applicable for CPA funds. That, that, that's what I'm really not sure of. I, it just came up the other day, so I haven't had a chance to really dig into the appropriation um, to see if it, if it is viable. But I, if you guys were on the committee, then was there any kind of discussion around that? Any kind of questions about what could and what 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 CPA funds could be used for as part of this project? Does anyone remember? Well, Terry, I don't know if you remember. But I mean, I'm you know, I go back and look at my records. I'm drawing a little bit whack. I mean, I think that the idea was that there was. You know, the idea was to 
preserve some of the artifacts of that building, but I think we did it almost as a, a little bit of a placeholder because we didn't do it. The chances of preserving anything were going to be lost, so we did it. You know, about the time I think at which the uh, the torn down so that it could be preserved. But I, you know, I have to go back and look to tell you because it's pretty short money, isn't it? Uh, twenty four thousand dollars was the funding. The the budget they have is closer to thirty, frankly. So they'll have to come up with some additional funds on their own. Well, what did the school come up? I mean, that's the the, the total project is over seventy, uh, of which you know more than half is already on the school end of things for per the budget that was. Sh but, but, the, but the project isn't landscaping for the Annie L. Brad Street, you know, for the Annie Brad Street rather. That's not the project. Well, the project is to preserve the sign. So right. all the other stuff is yeah. not included. Well, exactly. Right. So, but it's all mm -hmm. been, it's been put together as one budget. But it's not. Year. No, I know. But it's not. So that, it's there not. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, but well, here's the thing, right? So where does that, and this is where I think I need to get Suzanne's opinion on it, right? So if it's, if it's one plan where this, the Bradstreet sign memorial is a part of that overall landscape plan, um, where does, you know, what portion of the design should that be paid for? Well, yeah, I, and now it's beginning to come back to me. I don't think it was ever presented to CPA as part of a broader thing with landscaping and so forth. I think that got added later. Okay. with tracy that it's like you know we should fund the part that we originally agreed to fund and no more than that but landscaping seems to be a bit of a stretch for this agreed all right um let me do more homework on this one and um we'll report back uh back next month yeah uh okay Appreciate everyone's patience as we kind of barrel through these. I know it can be a little bit tedious, but hopefully we'll get our, our get our list barreled down. Uh, next is 1343, the Stevens Estate bathroom restoration looks to be, to was already closed. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's anything open for that one right now. Uh, 1344 is the Stevens Estate carriage house. Uh, this one looks like about 80% of the funds have been spent. I don't have a quarter report on file for this one. Does anyone know anything about this project? No. Okay. No. Okay. Nope. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't, Brian, I think maybe you, you might want to poke at the board a little bit. Okay. Yeah. You know, we've been, we've been talking about having them in at a future meeting anyway, so. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, 1349, uh, the library roof repairs, uh, that project is zero balance. I would say we should close that one. That project is complete. Uh, 1352, uh, Ridgewood, the first Ridgewood in 2017, looks like it's already been closed. 1355 has a zero balance. Uh, I believe this, we should also close that one. This is uh, also Ridgewood Cemetery. Yep. Uh, yep. 1356. Uh, this is secondary burial ground preservation, PJ? Yeah, that's still that's still ongoing. Okay. Yep. Great. 1357. Uh, and this one actually ties in with uh, 1375, we've got a report back from the chief. Those are um, moving along. Uh, if you look in the Google files, some pictures of the, uh, the steamer restoration uh, in progress. So uh, those are, uh, are humming along uh, nicely. Uh, 1358, uh, this is the uh, masonry refurbishment at the library. That is in progress. Um, we have a, a report on file for that one. 1374, another Ridgewood Cemetery project, zero balance. Uh, I'd say we should close. Or actually, I'm sorry, this one we actually did. We actually closed this one last meeting uh, in the minutes. 
1378 and 1379 were last year's projects. We don't have a report, report yet. Uh, I believe there's a lot of delays going on with regard to COVID. Uh, same with 1380. Uh, we have an update from the Stevens Estate that that project is, is underway. Okay. Good. Last stretch uh, on to affordable housing. Uh, Veterans Housing Project 1330 has a zero balance. Uh, I think okay. we should close that one. Mm -hmm. 13, yeah, yep. Frank, Frank, jump in if there's anything that, that I'm rushing through. Um, 1345, this was uh, 45 Milk Street, which we closed last year. I remember that one, so let's take that off. 1346, uh, the affordable housing uh, refurbishment, $100,000 is zero balance. Uh, we should close. 1347, uh, this is the senior housing refurbishment. Looks like they've uh, spent more than 95% of the funds. Does anyone know anything about this project? No. No. Okay. Is that the... This one's senior housing, Tracy. Yeah, no, I'm I'm looking at 14, 40, I mean 47, right? Yeah, 1347, yep. I feel like um I think that one could probably be closed out. Um I didn't Maggie send a quarterly report on that. I didn't see one on that one. I saw a report on I think four other projects. I can shoot her a quick email and check if the, if we're not if we're not sure, we can there's no reason not to hold it open. Okay. All right. I was looking for mine, Tracy, but I couldn't find it. Yeah, I think I know. I, it's it's tough when it's all online, Frank. I know. You're sticking around too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I'll check with Maggie on that one and uh, and just make sure. So, um, all of the affordable housing trust uh, funds are all at zero balances, which we should be able to close. That's uh, thirteen fifty three, thirteen sixty five, thirteen sixty nine. In 1376, um, 1354 is family housing um, has a zero balance for all intents and purposes. We should have to close that one. It's 94 cents left. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay, so emergency generator 1362. Uh, we do have an update on this one. Um, the report says should be complete by the end of this year. Uh, but we need to keep it open because they are anticipating some uh, some bills to to come in to to finish. Again, a lot of a uh, lot of COVID delays on on these projects just from contractors not getting in and everything else. Um, Thirteen sixty three. This is the uh, needs assessment. Uh, that project is complete. Uh, there's no further need uh, funding needed. Maggie says she can close that one. 1364 Bingham Way, uh, that project is also complete. Maggie says that can be closed. Uh, and then the last one we have is, uh, you know, 1370. Uh, this is we funded last year the, uh, for the kitchen for the housing authorities, uh, for the housing authority. Uh, nothing's been spent to date, COVID delay, um, but that project is in process. Uh, so no reason to go ahead and close that. So that folks is, all of the projects. Okay. All right. Thank you for your, your patience and, and barreling through those. So uh, at this point, um, I think someone does need to make a motion on it. Um, I move, I make the motion. I'm not sure how to word it. Um, <laughs> huh, huh. I, I have uh, make the motion. On all, I move forward with all the notes you just took on the outstanding projects. <laughs> <laughs> to close. All right. Well, I'll I'll read off the project numbers if you want. Okay. All right. Uh, projects 1360, 1366, 1367, 1373, 
1365, 1369, and 1376. Whoa. We're going to get this down to one sheet on the spreadsheet. Nice. All right. So, <coughs> so moved? So moved. So moved. All right. Uh, for the vote, we'll need to do a, uh, a roll call. Um, so uh, I'll start. Uh, John? Yes. Uh, Terry? Yes. Frank? Yes. CJ? Yes. Bill? Yes. And Tracy? Yes. All right. Uh, that uh, motion passes uh, unanimous. Okay. Um, before we get to, I guess, a pretty good minutes, um, I don't think there's anything else we want to talk about um, next month that we want to have in. I think there was a talk of having Maggie in, right, Tracy? Yes, um, and there's there are some exterior projects with North Andover being in the red and following DHCD guidelines. Their ex their interior work has you know grounded ground to a halt, just as everybody's with elderly disabled housing. Um, but yeah. she does have some exterior projects from the capital needs that I think she's um, I think it's gonna come forward with this year. A lot of it's new sidewalks, those kind of things. Huh. But right. she will come so that everybody can meet her next month, um, you know, and ask if anybody has questions on the outstanding projects, that type of thing. Excellent. Uh, did you want to reach out to her? Do you want, do you want me to do that, Trace? I'm happy to. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Any other thought? Maybe we'll uh, shoot to try and have the Stevens Advisory Board in. Yeah, no, I think that'd be good before we start getting applications. Okay. I'll shoot for those two for next month. Is anyone aware of any other projects out there that may be on the horizon? No. Okay. okay. Well, I think we got our hands full as it is. Great. And yeah. then um, what's the latest on I know the courts have been COVID affected as well. So I didn't know, I always missed my, um, I missed the update the last time she came to give us an update. I didn't know if, if there's anything worth updating or if it's kind of holding steady or, or what on that. Yeah, you know, I, I chatted with Suzanne a little bit about this. I don't think I'm talking, it's speaking anything as privileged. It, it really is court backlog right now. So I don't think there's been any forward progress uh, in either direction on it, um, but I can, uh, I'll, I'll check back in with Suzanne and see if there's any kind of, you know, just a, a, even if it's a status quo update, just to give the committee, um, mm -hmm. just so we know and kind of know not to bug her again for a few months, so. Yeah, yeah. What, on the uh, middle school project you're talking about? Yes, yeah. Yeah. update, Mary. So there, you know, and I can't, I can't, I can't say too much about it, I don't think, but there's some strong dialogue between the, neighbors in the in, in the town again so um i think things are going in a positive direction okay okay strong as in productive not as in strong but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's um good. that'd be great news okay uh, all right, so uh, with that, we'll, um, I guess, move on to the minutes. So um, it looks like based on who we have here, we have a, uh, enough of a quorum for each of the meetings to uh, finally approve these. Uh, so the first is the meeting minutes for March 12th of 2020. Uh, Tracy, you're the only one who can't vote on this one. Yeah, I have to. Okay. Does someone make a motion? So moved. Uh, okay. okay, we'll do a roll call. Uh, John? Yes. Uh, Terry? Yes. Frank? Yes. Uh, Bill? Yes. CJ? Yes. Uh, and I vote yes as well. Okay. Abstain okay. And I abstain. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Tracy. Yes, Tracy abstains. Uh, all right, September 10th, 2020 uh, meeting minutes. Uh, for this one, CJ and Frank uh cannot vote so uh, moved. so moved thank you uh john 
Second, yes. Uh, Terry. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Bill. Yes. And I am a yes as well. Uh, Frank, CJ, uh, abstain. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Lastly, uh, last meetings, uh, last month's meeting minutes. Uh, CJ, um, we need to abstain from this one. Um, yep. So your motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Yeah. All right. We'll do it again. John. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Bill. Yes. Frank. Yes. Uh, and me, I'm a yes as well. Um, all right. Any other motions anyone else would like to make? No. Well, we need one big one. Oh. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Uh, do I do it, John? Do I get a roll call on this one? Sure. All right, John. Yes. Terry. Yes. Frank. Yes. CJ. Yes. Bill. Yes. And Tracy. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. So uh, we are uh, adjourned until next month.